notified to take a look at ufosightingsdaily.com in regards to some interesting photographs. What you're looking at is Apollo 7 images launched October 11th, 1968. Scott Warning, the owner of the website, claims that the detail in the ship is made by a species far more advanced than us and its design looks nothing like most of us would imagine. Take a look at the photos and you decide. We're going to go to the original website where this was published and that is Lunar and Planetary Institute website. Uh, they're a planetary institute and they research and support services to NASA and the planetary science community and conducts planetary science research. Well, what do they have to explain about these pictures and why did NASA cover up these photos with duct tape? NASA now has a reputation for covering up UFO ET evidence uh, pretty much in plain sight. It's nothing new. They've been doing this since early times during the Apollo missions. Here's more evidence. I'd have to say UFOSightingsDaily.com does a great job in looking at NASA anomalies and posting it on their website. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies, your eyes peeled for the unknown. Have your cameras ready. Send it to Third Phase of Moon. Share it with us. Share it with the world. We'll see you again next time. Third Phase of Moon. Greg Bradford, visiting from Minnesota, right here on the Big Island of Hawaii, captures of what looks to be some kind of military craft, in my opinion. But he claims it was a flying saucer, and it made no noise. Take a look at the video. When I say military aircraft, I mean reverse engineered alien technology involved, so don't get me wrong, I believe that there's something going on in this video. The military is conducting major operations right here in Hawaii. Exercises. Is this some kind of new military technology? Check the link below to view the original video. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. This is something special. Share this video. Embed it. Get the word out. Blake Cousins. We'll see you again next time. Third. Base. Achoo. Third. Base. And the Mars Science Laboratory posted some raw images that we're going over right now of what looks to be some kind of, well, if you ask me, a man on Mars cleaning the rover. I did a side-by-side -side comparison with Brian. I had him stand out to see if we could match the image and the silhouette, and it turns out to look to be a perfect match. Everybody, what's going on on Mars? Blake Cousins, keep your eyes on the skies. We'll see you again next time. Be sure to check out the original link to the Mars Science Laboratory to see for yourself this incredible evidence. What you're looking at is the HV Project. Incredible imagery of the sun just taken a couple days ago of what looks to be a triangular shaped star craft, possibly harnessing energy from the sun. 
This incredibly large starcraft is approximately the size of two Earth-like planets. I put the link in the original description below. Take a look and make sure you put in the coordinates that are specified right here. Everybody join us tonight on 1998, Honoka, Hawaii. This is what got Third Phase of Moon, myself and Brent Cousins involved with something extraterrestrial. With over a dozen eyewitnesses, we witnessed UFOs all night. Nobody had a video camera or cell phone like modern technology now. The new era has begun. We are not alone. We're excited to announce 2015 to get to new videos, photographs. From all new footage just into third phase moon, we've got Ed, famous abductee from 2014 controversial. Incredible imagery. Is he the man that has the best footage for the past decade, in my opinion, right here at Third Phase of Moon, his videos, his photographs have still yet to be debunked by the by the experts out there, whoever they are. Anyway, Ed, Happy New Year. Thanks again for joining us right here at Third Phase. Well, well happy, happy New Year right back to you, Blake. I hope you enjoy this new footage. Uh, I, I just shot this with my with my new Christmas gift. I got a, a, a Samsung phone and I shot it with that. So. It's not the best, but I'm learning to use it, and it's easy to get out, but I, I don't know how good of a job it is. But you take a look at this footage, Blake. This this is something I, I've never seen. This is incredible. I, I got my neighbor in on it, too. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm not a military career guy. But I've never, you know, but this, this looks military to me, Blake. You have a look and tell me what you think. You know, we're looking at it right now. I just got this video within 20 minutes, and I'm glad you're taking our call right here at Third Phase. And I'm going to be asking the big questions right here because people want to ask you the big questions, Ed. Ed. Shoot, go ahead. I'm here. All right, Ed. Is this a drone? Did Is this something that you manufactured yourself? No, no, no. This is not me manufacturing anything, but I was going to answer your question. Yes, maybe so. My opinion is that this... This is a military-based craft, and is it a drone per se? I, I, not the ones I've been seeing on the news, but um, I think this is a military craft. And, and I say that because of the time of day and the experience that I've had before uh, with, with, with other ships, with other craft. This, this is not like that. Well, this is definitely not Colorado. You see the coastline in the background. Can you tell us where you shot this? No, I, I, I don't want to tip my hand and my, my family's privacy, but spent the holiday season over here on, on the left coast. We're, we're up in Northern California. Okay, Ed, we're looking at the footage again, and the beginning part is one of the most fascinating. It's probably the most close-up imagery of an unidentified flying object, flying saucer, possibly reverse-engineered technology, military-based, as you say. Tell me, how big was this thing? Oh, this was about you know the size of a uh, of a midsize uh, family car. It, 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 it seemed to be no longer than what 20 feet long. Wow, you know the the clarity and did it give off any kind of sound or hum? Obviously, this is a question that needs to be asked. You know, Blake, there was a sound, and it was uh, more of a sound from displacement of wind, of movement of air, didn't have a mechanized sound, didn't have a, 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 an exhaust sound. All right, Ed, you were talking about neighbors, or you you had family that witnessed the same thing? Well, not my family, but my, my relatives' neighbors were home, and, and they, 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 they were making some sounds and noises when I was shooting it, I went over and talked to them and got them in on it. So, uh, I was not the only one to, to, to get this setting. You know, Ed, uh, there is a lot of, sometimes flack that comes in the third phase of me just by sharing uh, your footage, your story. People say, some people say you're the, you're the, you're the man. You, you have some of the best footage well, in ever. I, I don't know about that being a man or anything, but, you know, I got a lot of footage. I shared a lot of footage with you and response has been, you know, pretty much positive, but there's always going to be people out there saying this, that, but. I don't know what to say to them, Blake. I, I can just tell you what happened the other day in this new footage I, I sent to you. You know, it, it, this is important stuff. This is amazing stuff, and I share it with you guys. 
and there's other people there experiencing with me and I gotta tell you some of them didn't even care that we're there some of them are there we're like look at it look at that and we're shooting it and they don't even care while we're seeing it so uh I don't know what they're saying with something like that uh you can't make all the people happy all the time I don't know what to tell you about it but all right, I, I wanted to extend this conversation. I know you'd like to keep it short, but I want to have you on for a few more minutes because I think this is, you know, broad daylight sightings, flying saucers, shot, unconventional technology, well, not on a potato. It's very clear what we're seeing here. Let me say this, Ed, in your opinion, again, you don't think this is, this is alien whatsoever? Like some of your past occurrences with Vox? No, Blake, Blake, yeah. My initial opinion is that this is military. And the reason why is the, the size, the shape, the movement, the way it acted, and also the time of day. I've, I've had uh, encounters with flying objects during the day, but primarily it does happen at, at nighttime, at dusk, and uh, late at night. Uh, I've had much fewer sightings during the day. And, and the way this craft behaved, again, I'm no expert, but I, I tend to believe that this is a military-based craft. So do you think, we just had a question here from uh, my brother here, do you think uh, it's possibly military that's following you around now? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, anything's possible, but I don't look at myself as being that important. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of footage that I'm still collating and you know, getting different formats together. Because this is an important archive, but as far as being tracked and monitored, I don't know. And I don't really, you know, what the heck, I'm an old man now, I don't care. What the heck, I'm just sharing what I got. You know, I don't know, Blake, I don't know. Let me ask you this, you do share this stuff with Third Phase of Moon, and I don't see you sharing it anywhere else throughout the media, CNN. And have you tried to submit this footage? I know uh, people right here at Third Phase are looking forward to your uh, evidence, but <laughs> anybody else? Any? Are you sharing it with you know, anybody else? Hey, I got to tell you, I've, I've I've shared this stuff with the major networks over the years. Some of my footage dates back, you know, 1970s. I don't want to drop names, but the people I've sent this footage to and have contacted and follow up with me, and, and never anything ever came of it. And uh, you know, there was a time in my life, I'll be honest with you, that this was what I was going to do because I had this footage and I had these events happen to me over and over again. So. I realized that a, at a, a long time ago that this was not going to define me and who I am and how I'm making my life and living. I have a job, I have a career, I got a family, but this is something that is part of my life, and it's not just me. It's many people out there, as I said before. But I'm not the only one. But you know, I share it with you, and you guys use it. You get some mileage out of it. So more power to you. Uh, I appreciate you, Blake, and, and your brother, your brother Brent, and what you guys are doing, and. Um, like you guys say, let's just let the people decide. You could show it to them. Absolutely, Ed. You heard him right here. 2015, the first of something that's going to go down in history, I think. Ed's footage is something that people need to look at. We're just getting uh, some insight coming in right here at Third Phase Moon. Ed, I really want to thank you for joining us. And, uh, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure uh, speaking with you and your brother. And I hope to be sharing some more stuff. I, I wish you both a merry, ha uh, happy new year and all, all your third phase of Moon family. That's it, Ed. Everybody. Blake Cousins here. Look at the footage. We're slowing it down, analyzing what it is. I don't see it. Whoa, look at that. It's right overhead. Welcome back, Third Phase Moon, Blake Cousins here, the top UFO channel in regards to the UFO phenomenon. You saw the video last night, we posted it. Now we got James with us right here at Third Phase Moon. We're gonna go over his testimony and his eyewitness accounts to what looks that some people are claiming is the Aurora Project. So right now we're gonna go to James right now. Welcome to Third Phase Moon. Thank you. All right, James, you submitted this last night. Can you tell me uh, when this went down, what happened, and uh, what was your thoughts on this? Let's start. Where was this in the first place? You know, I, uh, I live in Lompoc, and that's not too far from Vandenberg. And uh, I think that, it, you know, who knows? There could be some secret thing they're doing. For all I know, but I've never seen anything like it. Well, when we're listening to the video... It seems that uh, 
you're looking for it, then all of a sudden it appears over a rooftop. Is this your home? No, no. It's, uh, it's you know, it's not too far from my home. But uh, what happened was the same. I, I got a glimpse of it earlier. It caught my eye, and I, I just sort of stopped what I'm doing. It went out of sight. And I was looking for it, and I, it, it turned. It must have turned to come in the direction it did over the house. And when it did, it was a surprise, you know. Hey, it's a pretty blue, but whoa, I've never seen anything. I was just going, what in the hell is that? Absolutely. Do you think um, some people are claiming that it's a drone? But drone, drones make a lot of noise. Did you hear any noise of any kind? No noise whatsoever. And it was, uh, you know, I don't know. It was just, it felt eerie actually in the area where i was at and a couple of people i was with that guy that was really strange it felt funny you you say it felt funny in what way oh yeah you know I, it's really hard to tell how far away it was oh well what i meant is you know it was sizable you said uh, that you that people said it felt funny was there like a static charge in the air it, you know, something that, you know, I can't really pin down at all, you know, I can't say it's, you know, like electric or static at all. It just felt strange, you know, in the ambient. When you uh, captured the object in the second uh, shot, there appears to be some kind of, like, orb that just darts into the picture and then totally freezes, then uh, seems like it kind of goes in the direction of the craft itself. Did you notice that as well while you're filming this? I didn't. I, I'm not, I don't have a clue what that is. I saw the, the video and I saw that, but, you know, I can't explain what that was. My focus was on, on, the, on the, something that I was spectacular to me. So let me ask you, did you um, think about UFOs prior to this? What was your uh, thoughts on extraterrestrial existence? Oh, well, in this particular case, you know, it, it looked out of this world, but it's hard to say, uh, you know, it was, you know, something just so strange and beautiful, actually. It was really sort of neat. And, but as far as my feelings go, yes, I believe in life elsewhere. The odds are so much for extraterrestrial life. I'm inclined to believe civilizations billions of years, universes away, have existed over the eons. I, I'm not so sure, you know, I think, uh, you know, I don't know what we could say to these folks, you know, that if they're coming here, in my opinion, from interstellar, just amazing technology. If they're coming intergalactic, it's just way beyond uh, understanding how they could do that. It's for us, you know, we're like uh, monkeys in a zoo compared to them. Wow, James, I really want to uh, thank you for sharing your footage with us at Third Phase Moon. We're going to put it out and share it to the world again. Thanks for uh, submitting this. I'm going out tonight and look for it again. Absolutely. Keep in touch if you capture anything uh, incredible and keep us updated. I'll have my camera handy. You heard it right there, James, right here at Third Phase of Moon. Incredible testimony footage. Everybody, we're not alone. The conclusion I've come to is incredibly wild, that those in charge have been successful in keeping secret the greatest story of mankind. The evidence is overwhelming that Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft. The CIA guy standing next to me says, we're confiscating all this data and you're all sworn to secrecy. They've all been studying this. They have more data than I do. So the, the government has dumped disinformation and, and misinformation into the field for decades. They've undermined research. I, I have lost uh, faith in representative government. 
I, I truly think we're in gridlock, it doesn't work, and so we need to make a change. I think it's ignorant of any people not to seek out what we need to know to continue the universe. You give this committee a lot of reasons for us to say, open those files. Walking up to it and you touch it, what do you do? Touch it, that? Do you grab it? What, tell us about that. Okay. I started doing the walk around 360 of the, uh, of the object. And uh, as I came around, I, I seen there was an inscription on, on the front. Uh, and this is what you saw, right? That's what I saw. So I started walking around the craft and I, I seen the glyphs and uh, as I, you know, uh, ran my hand from the uh, fabric of the craft. Uh, it was smooth to touch. Uh, you ran your hands along it? Oh, uh, yeah. I believe that the time is now to lift the veil of secrecy that has shrouded this subject for over 60 years, and the subject of UFOs should now be openly accepted in the mainstream media. to save us against it, the insanity of our leaders. I agree with you, they should open those Roswell files. There is only one way to regain trust. Find and tell the truth. If it's out there, if it's real, we have a right to know. In the sky. Blake Cousins here. Strange phenomenon in the sky over Stockton, California. 2015 Safun submitted incredible footage of what eyewitnesses from the general area report a large UFO event that lasted for over five minutes. That blue thing right there. People were stunned as the crack shot up in the sky and left a plasma awake in the clouds. No, check out the thing in the sky. Look. It's weird. It's some kind of. That is beautiful. Check that out, you guys. But I should look red. Now it's turning red. Yeah. I think it's some kind of like a plasma thing. I don't fucking know. Oh shit, and look at the clouds, it's uh... No, over here, the, the other one, we saw. Oh, what the fuck? It was weird. Look. look. Those are like plug specs. Uh -huh. it's, look, That's it's a so sign cool. of something. Oh shit, and look to the right a little bit, there's a blue one developing. See it? That's a sign of something. Oh, oh that is scary. That is crazy. Oh, what's going on? Do you think it should be taking everything away? Wow, that is crazy right there. Wow, what is that, dude? Look up, look, zoom in. It's turning red. And there's another one on the right, developing. Is this a wormhole time jump captured on camera? Everybody keep your eyes on the skies, we're not alone. Blake Cousins. We'll see you again next time.
February 10th, 2015, the U.S. commercial cargo ship known as the Dragon departs from the International Space Station as an unidentified object tracks its departure. Take a look. Third. Notice as the UFO appears in frame, the camera conveniently switches to another camera angle. Typical NASA trying to cover up UFO evidence. During the departure, there was actually two UFO events. Now take a look at this. The original link to NASA's commercial cargo ship departure is in the description below. Everybody keep your eyes on the skies and keep a close eye on NASA, Blake Cousins. We'll see you again next time. Third base Third base. Tell your mom to go on. Welcome back, Blake Cousins, third phase of moon. The Phoenix light phenomenon has happened again. Green gray captures just over Arizona. Captured February 3rd, 2015. Green gray goes on to explain that what's not visible in the video is the shape of the craft and the massive size of it. His fiance and his wife track this massive object in the sky. Everybody take a look. Tell your mom to go on. a huge like circle from the upstairs window from uh, Richard's window. Okay. Yeah, it's also visible. Wow. Green Gray also states the local news did a story claiming that it was some kind of Air Force flare drop. But that's what they said about the Phoenix lights. There they go again, the media trying to explain away the UFO phenomenon. Everybody keep your eyes on the skies, and if you've captured anything incredible, submit it to Third Phase of Movie, a Skype or Facebook. Again, the main description below of Green Gray's account is in the description. Blake Cousins, we'll see you again next time. It's moving. Stunning shot from the Apollo 10 mission 1969 of the Earth. As we zoom in closer, people tell us via email, take a look at Street Cat's discovery of what looks to be some kind of plasmic life form just above Earth's orbit. Take a look.
And if you've captured anything incredible in regards to the UFO phenomenon, please contact Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. Blake Cousins here. We'll see you again next time. Phase Moon Blake Cousins here. Adam submits incredible video from Mountain View, Sunnyvale, California, 6.30 a.m. On his way to work on January 31st, 2015, Adam writes, I saw this on my commute this morning. Clear skies all around minus this cloud formation, which is brown on the left side, blue and white towards the middle, and red near the end. I've also seen UFOs near this location in the past. My work is right at the exit of the video, and Moffat Field is just minutes away. Well, Adam, we did a little bit of checking, and there are people that are claiming that it wasn't a UFO or any harp testing, but in fact, a Delta II rocket that was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Thanks, Adam, for submitting your video to Third Phase Moon. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. Have your cameras ready. We're not alone, people. Blake Cousins, we'll see you again next time. Just off the coast of South Mexico, Puerto Angel, Javier Garcia captures an incredible sighting along with eyewitnesses as this event goes on for a few minutes. Take a look. Join the discussion as Dr. J. Andy Elias interviews famous journalist Jaime Musan from Mexico City. And we enhance this video, get close ups, and get a closer look. The link is right there. Click it. Listen to the entire interview right now. Blake Cousins, keep your eyes on the skies. We'll see you again next time. Third Phase Moon, Blake Cousins here. Don't forget Friday night's radio show. The link is below. More investigation, more insight into Canada's possible UFO crash. But in the meanwhile, take a look at this image. Dwarf planet Sirius taken by NASA's Dawn Probe on February 9th, 2015 from a distance of about 29,000 miles shows two mysterious bright spots on the dwarf planet surface. The Dawn principal investigator Chris Russell of UCLA said in the statement that this may be pointing into a volcanic-like origin of spots, but we'll have to wait for a better resolution before we can make such geological interpretations. Could this be some kind of colonized outpost on a dwarf planet with an intelligent design? Everybody, take a look. 
Leave your comments below on what you think these lights are. Everybody, stand by. We'll see you Friday night. Straight from Manitoba Jackhead Indian Reservation, we have an eyewitness that left a message right here at Third Phase of Moon. Stay tuned for that. Blake Cousins, keep your eyes on the skies. We'll see you again next time. Blake Cousins here. Welcome back to Phase of Moon. Just going over our emails this morning, and we were notified to take a look at ufosightingsdaily.com in regards to some interesting photographs. What you're looking at is Apollo 7 images launched October 11th, 1968. Scott Warning, the owner of the website, claims that the detail in the ship is made by a species far more advanced than us, and its design looks nothing like most of us would imagine. Take a look at the photos and you decide. We're going to go to the original website where this was published, and that is Lunar and Planetary Institute website. Uh, they're a planetary institute, and they research and support services to NASA and the planetary science community and conducts planetary science research. Well, what do they have to explain about these pictures, and why did NASA cover up these photos with duct tape? NASA now has a reputation for covering up UFO ET evidence uh, pretty much in plain sight. It's nothing new. They've been doing this since early times during the Apollo missions. Here's more evidence. I'd have to say UFOSightingsDaily.com does a great job in looking at NASA anomalies and posting it on their website. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies, your eyes peeled for the unknown. Have your cameras ready. Send it to Third Phase Moon. Share it with us. Share it with the world. We'll see you again next time. Third Phase Moon. Third Phase of Moon, back, live on the radio, taking your calls from around the world. We'll be playing a video while you're listening to this show. If you haven't been seeing it already and asking, what are we looking at? Well, it's a flying saucer captured a week before this went down over the Winnipeg area. Uh, this came in just yesterday, and they said that it was a really nice clear day, and Whatever was up in the sky stayed there for about three minutes. This is the whole entire uncut video. It's quite amazing. We're going to be zooming in on this thing, getting a closer look. It's not a balloon, in my opinion. It's metallic in structure. It's incredible video, and it's ironic that it's a flying disc captured over Canada in the Winnipeg area, and then a week later, this goes down. Could this be the disc? Could this be what the military uh, was testing in that area with the population being so minimum what a perfect place to test flight a flying saucer reverse engineered possibly and maybe it malfunctioned and it went down and people they don't want the people to share it they don't want people to get it out this is some of uh some incredible evidence that's coming in the line is to call in right now three four seven nine three four zero three seven eight third phase moon is standing by Take a look at this video, incredible, and we'll be right back. Third Phase Moon Radio, live, taking your calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon happening right now. The past few days have been very, I would have to say, crazy about what's been going down, what's been coming into Third Phase Moon in regards to the alleged UFO crash over there, Manitoba, Jackhead First nation, reservation, military cover-up, or just a military exercise of an airplane purposely downed by the military to see if they could recover an airplane in the middle of a lake. Doesn't sound very practical if you ask me. When we received word from multiple sources, when we went live a few days ago with Mark's interview, the world picked this up. And... Everybody started to become an investigator. We were the first to break this news story to the world, and we were hoping to see maybe if the world is going to change. We tried to get in touch with the chief of Manitoba, and we got in touch with the band office, and a mysterious man took the phone call. I thought he said he was the chief, but then it turned out he was somebody else that was 
speaking for the chief. I'm not exactly sure who this man was, but if you listen to his testimony, it sounds very suspicious. Uh, his mannerisms and his openness to communicate to debunk the story seemed a little unusual, if you ask me, everybody. The link is below to listen to whomever was at the band office over there in Manitoba. It's quite incredible. Then, just yesterday, I received a message from a man who wants to remain anonymous, who apparently was on the scene as this event went down. We're going to be listening to that live right here at Third Phase of Moon Radio. Remember, call in, share your story. If you have any questions, we'll be standing by. Now, let's get to this incredible message that I received yesterday. I'm not going to say my name at this time. I am a mineral services engineer. I've been working in the area for uh, many years now. The reason I'm calling is because I've been following this story in the social media, and much of what you guys are talking about is uh, quite correct, but I've got to say that there's a lot of disinformation going around out there, and I just want to set the record straight about these uh, fishermen who uh, were allegedly detained. Now, I saw several gentlemen being uh, taken away by the uh, Canadian police. I, I believe that this may have something to do with what they're saying are the fishermen, relating to the story of the fishermen being detained. I don't know that these gentlemen were fishermen. I don't really know who they are or what they were doing, but I do know that these gentlemen were taken away by the Canadian authorities. This, this area, it is being guarded, it is being surveyed, there's a lot of surveillance, there are a lot of military personnel in this area. Uh, the level of military activities that were taking place in this area were very extreme. There must have been about 40 personnel there and 20 vehicles there. When I, uh, when I finally did leave the area and I headed back towards the village, I noticed that there was quite a presence of military and some kind of professional personnel throughout the town, which I really had never seen before. In my years working in this area, I have never seen this level of military activity throughout this area. And it seems as though this is something that they don't want anybody to know about or to talk about. I had a lot of difficulty getting my camera out of the area. When I, when I got close to the town, I was approached by some officers and they asked me, did I have a laptop or any digital devices on me? And fortunately, I had buried my camera underneath the tire compartment in the back of my truck. And so they fortunately didn't search my vehicle. And so I was able to get out with my uh, camera. And so I'll be sending you the photos that I did get from the area there are some very peculiar things taking place there. You guys can be the judge yourself. There has been a lot of activity over the last three nights. and But today, it really seemed to quiet down a bit. So whatever may have been there, perhaps they finally uh, have dealt with the issue. I, don't know. I really don't know what's going on up here. I'll be getting back to you guys. Uh, within the next couple of days, the next time I go out there. I just want you to keep following the story. I appreciate what you guys are doing, and keep following this story. There's something really interesting going on here. I'll get back to you guys. Thank you. Third Phase of Moon taking your calls live from around the world. The number to call in is 347-934-0378. Also, text and emails have been coming in to Third Phase of Moon, and I wanted to share this with everybody as well. What we're doing right here is we're sharing information that comes in. We're not claiming this is all fact. From day one, we were suspicious from the story, but we said, hey, we're going to share this. And, uh, you know, 12 hours later, when we woke up, we found out multiple sources from different people that had no contact with the original source was saying the same story. So this, uh, I think, still deserves a close eye. Now, here's the text that came in from a, a man. He called himself David, and uh, he said this is in the message. Here's how it goes. Listen to me. I don't have 
I don't have much time, and this mail and email might be terminated soon. My name is David, and I live here in Canada. I was one of the people who witnessed the event. I recorded a video of the military moving away the UFO, and a video of the UFO crashed. I have it all. I've realized that I've been watching this for the past few days, and I know I have more information, and they're threatening me. I'm afraid of going outside because they follow me everywhere. You have to believe me. They are real. They are here. A few days ago, I was forced to delete any information I had about this event in, in Can Canada. I had time to make copies of the videos and pictures, and I was able to... I was able to save him that day. So he's saying that I, he doesn't know if he should send them. He says that he's being forced by the military to delete these photographs. He says that he copied them, and he's, he's worried if he wants to share these or not. Well, we're, we're here, people. We're standing by. If anybody in that area has something that we have not seen yet, any information, reach out to Third Phase of Moon. Share it. Share it. we got to break this out if this is what... People are claiming is the new 1947 Roswell experience. Everybody, the number to call in is 934. Very code 347-934-0378. We'll be right back. Wow, I'm looking at this uh, video, and I want to share this incredibly fast right now. I want to share it. I want to share it to the world. I think I should just get to editing this radio show showing the up-close details, enhanced video of this flying saucer captured a week before this all went down in Manitoba. Jackhead Reservation, First Nation, is this the spot? So, breaking news that we just put out uh, yesterday. Theories, the dwarf planet, captured by NOVA, NASA's satellite 29,000 miles away, captures incredible photography and when you zoom in I'm asking myself is this maybe the biggest evidence that we've not yet seen in a long time of a possible alien outpost captured on NASA's cameras themselves we uh, put this photograph out the, the link is in the description and you have to ask yourself maybe maybe some people are claiming that we were from this dwarf planet Sirius, and this is where uh, man maybe possibly originated from or uh, existed at one point and then made their way to planet Earth. Uh, a month ago, astronomers were looking at this incredible anomaly. While it's very blurry, the video that was coming in, and now a month later, this incredible high-res definition photograph comes in, and scientists and NASA can, still cannot explain what this anomaly is. They're saying that it could be, uh, you know, volcanic spots, but there's no plumes whatsoever. Uh, vol volcanoes don't really display themselves in a in a likeness to this. I think this video needs to be put out there. Kelly, what's your um, what do you think? What do you think I should do? You think I should get to it right now? You want to see this video that uh, was shot a week ago before uh, all this went down? It's quite incredible. Yeah, I'd like to uh, see that, especially uh, with all that stuff, crazy stuff in Manitoba. Um, yeah, I've been uh, keeping up on that as well with you guys. And uh, I don't know, to me, like, like I listened to that interview with that, that guy that was supposed to be, I don't know, a part of that office up there. He kind of sounds suspicious to me as well. That's why I kind of like wrote that stuff on your on the Facebook post that you had on there. Is, you know, because like all those signs up there to me, like I'll remember all the signs that you guys pictures of is like, you know, your, your uh, country needs you and or your government needs you. Please stay quiet or to that effect. To me, that's uh, kind of what's going on up there. I hope we can get these pictures and videos that we'll send out to you so we can all uh, check them out. Absolutely. You know, Kelly, I, I did uh, find it uh, quite interesting when I did get in touch with somebody, some kind of official at the band office for the Jackhead Reservation over there in Manitoba. But it was it was a cold call. Uh, he gave permission for me to share the conversation, but the way he kind of opened up and was, you know, he didn't even flinch when I talked about 
the rumors going on in this area about a UFO that crashed into the lake over there. It, act, he acted like, like, the, like, oh yeah, that's a regular question that somebody would ask. Well, well, tell me, what do you find suspicious in that conversation? You know, let's get a little bit more in depth. I know there was a little bit of confusion because I was looking for uh, the chief. I, I know the guy's name. I'm not going to say it here on air, but I was looking for the chief, and I, his first name is John, and David, excuse me, and then he says, the chief, that's the chief. He's not in, but I could have I swore he says, I'm the chief, and then I called him the chief, and he didn't uh, bother correcting me. Kelly? Yeah, I mean, if you listen to it, I mean, he seemed to be more, like, too casual, like, you know, too, like, laid back, you know what I mean? And the way he was explaining everything for him is saying that, yeah, there's a uh, military up there, and I guess they were at a school or something doing business, and, you know, like, it was nothing happened. Like, kind of like too much, too much of the, like, oh, not nothing here, nothing here, nothing to see here. You know, that's kind of like the attitude he was, that I was feeling like he was portraying. And then he was, you know, when you guys cut short, like, you know, like you were more defending in the conversation, he was, like, quick to get off or to me, again, like, what you know, the your old, you know, the, like the last school, a couple of weeks when we were talking about this was when all those signs that you had, that the pictures that people sent you, that, you know, to keep quiet, your government needs you. I mean, if, if even though they were do, uh, if military were up there and they were doing, uh, you know, the uh, Operation Bison up there, I mean, I don't understand where they're, they're trying to say that they shot down an airplane and, you know, they're not going to just shoot down an airplane, you know, and just have a land up there. If there's, I mean, that's Indian land up there. It's desolate. There's nothing really going on up there except for the military planning and stuff like that. It's, it's just kind of weird because just like that lady was, you know, saying as well that they would, they, they uh, let, they, the military will let people know within the community, hey, this is going to be happening around in here. I mean, they do that all the time up here. Camp Pendleton, you know, they'll let us, everybody know that they're going to be firing weapons or, you know, it's all blank, but, you know, it's going to be really loud. You know, they'll, they'll let people know what's going to, you know, the community know at least what's happening. They just don't uh, show up on your doorstep and say, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, we're we're going to do some exercises. It was weird. He said that they uh, took over the school for a couple of days to use it as a command post, and he also stated uh th- and he, there's this long pause in his in his response about this UFO crash in Lake. He says, as far as I know, uh, they were fixing their snow machines. And uh, exactly what he meant by snow machine, I'm not exactly sure. And, yeah, it was, it was a suspicious conversation. And uh, he said I could call back and I'm – going to call back and see if I could get in touch with the chief himself because where's the chief is the big question. The people were saying early on the chief was the one that was uh, being detained and he was the one that got the pictures. So everybody where's the chief? Where's the chief of Manitoba? Come forward if you can, chief, because uh, send it to us. Uh, contact Third Phase of Moon. But as far as the response we got, it was uh, pretty much he closed he closed the case. He said uh, nothing went down, and his uh, business is usual, simple military exercise, non-event. And uh, some people take him on his word for that, and and some people, I by all means, this uh, this phone call that we got today uh, goes against what the chief said or that person over there at the office that we just shared right here live. So there's two sides of the story. There's more than uh, multiple eyewitnesses that uh, counter uh, contradict what the the man at the band office says. So, you know, military has a pretty good way of, I'm sure if they know what they're doing, they're going to know how to cover this up as fast as possible and uh, keep it as discreet as possible. They've done this before. That's their M.O. If in regards to the UFO phenomenon and uh, extraterrestrial existence. Kelly, hey, thanks for joining us right here at Third Phase. Hey, yeah, no problem. But uh, your question to that, with what a snow machine is, like even up in Alaska when I used to live up there, uh, a snow machine is just another word that they use for snowmobiles. So if they were up there fixing their snowmobiles, I don't understand because a mobile unit and stuff like that, they don't, they're, they're going to be carrying parts. They ain't going to be needing any place to like stop on and fix their vehicles. 
Anyway, yeah. It's a well, and the military said change. that they purposely crashed an aircraft over there, and then he had no, he didn't confirm, confirm nor deny that report. He said they're fixing snow machines in the in the lake, and he didn't mention anything about some, uh, you no know, downed aircraft purposely uh, brought down by the military. So I thought that was interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, why would uh, why would he say why would he say that? Oh, yeah, there's nothing up there that you know, there's nothing I didn't see. I could see my lake. I could see the lake from here. I don't see anything. But when the the military is you know letting the people know, or even the newspaper saying, yeah, it was a down aircraft, that don't you know that don't that don't add up to me. Yeah, and if there was a down aircraft, why not just share a photograph or some video of uh, just to set everybody at ease? What's so top secret about? recovering an aircraft from a frozen lake if that's all it was and then people are claiming just as we uh, said earlier in the radio show with our conversation not conversation but somebody left me a message via skype and they uh stated that they saw people being detained and what do you think of that what it's kind of yes it's hard to grasp what's actually going on down there it's just uh it's quite amazing kelly again yeah, uh, I'll, that's what I. That's the thing I want to see. That guy, he, that uh, you know, the interviews he had. That if he did see something like that, I mean, he sounds like he's pretty legit. You know, what I mean, I, I would like to see some of that stuff. I would like to see the military around us, be around us, the spaceship or whatever it is that they, you know, claiming that they have. Now, if they're even saying that it's an aircraft, I mean, what kind of aircraft these guys got up there? You know. Again, military is not just going to down an aircraft, especially around, you know, if they're going to be around any kind of village and where any kind of bystanders are going to be at. They're going to let them know. They're not just going to, like I said, they're not just going to, hey, you know, we're going to do this exercise. And next, you know, oh, well, we, we didn't blow it out of the sky, but let's follow this thing where it hits the ground. And, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's make sure that no one sees it. You know, it's going to be like all top secret. Even the, some of the the first pictures you got handed out, you know, that that everybody's seen online, it was like there is no wing, there is no debris laid all out everywhere. This thing looks pyramidal shape, you know, it's it's landing it through the ice. It's got you know a, a long stretch mark, thumbs up like that. You know, you can't just you know. And then so all these stories coming out, and they're all oh, the guy that you contacted con- contradicting it. It just don't add up. You know, some people are. Uh put it on the flash side, and I think it's kind of a common uh, a common thought here, people are saying right here, and some of them, uh, Robert Francis says that it's because it's a top secret vehicle, and they had an accident, and they don't want you to know about it, and they have uh, what they have, the technology they have, and it makes sense why they would cover it up. I think that's the most uh, logical statement in regard to this. You have to think logical. Why the cover-up? Why so many secrets? Why the different statements from people on the ground over there? Why is the story continuously changing? Why are people... uh, Who is this guy at the office that I spoke to? I want to know that as well. And why, why aren't they just coming truth? coming out with the truth and sharing some photos of an aircraft that they downed over there, if that's the case. Everybody, this is uh, the big questions that we're asking. We're going to be sharing this video. You've been watching it right here on uh, YouTube, Third Phase of Moon. we got to get it out. A video of a flying saucer a week before this all went down in Manitoba. And Manitoba. And it is the Jackhead Reservation area. Everybody, keep an eye out. Keep safe over everybody in that area. Uh, this is still breaking news, in my opinion. Blake Cousins. We'll see everybody again Earth. next time. Phase. What? All right. Welcome back to Hour 2 of Dr. J Radio Live. Travis Walton and filmmaker Tracy Torme. Uh, Travis and Tracy, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much. Great to be here. Great to be here, Dr. J. 
It's an absolute honor to have both of you on at the same time. And Tracy, I believe this is our first time on record finally speaking. So I'm actually really excited to, to, to speak to both of you and give the listeners out there a good preview of what you're going to be speaking about when we actually get to this April 4th event. Let me backtrack first and go direct the first question to Tracy. Tracy, were you interested in ufology prior to you hearing about Travis's case or what made you go down the path of taking a case such as Travis's and putting it into the mainstream media as you did with the film Fire in the Sky? Yes, I was always interested and in when I went to I went to film school at USC uh, I made a decision when I was there that I wanted to do sort of the penultimate UFO film. I had sort of been a little bit dissatisfied with Close Encounters. I think there's a lot of good things about Close Encounters, but there are certain things about it that I, that really I did not like. And so I did have an idea from a pretty early stage that I wanted to do a UFO film at some point in my career. Now, when was it that you actually met Travis and started looking into his case as being the one that you wanted to write about and, and, and in essence, show on the big screen? Well, I owned the rights to the book Missing Time by Bud Hopkins, and I actually spent three years in Hollywood trying to launch that as a movie. And uh, at that time, really, people were not familiar with abductions and... Uh, and so after a sort of a, a long, frustrating time of trying to launch that, I thought, well, maybe what I need is a, the best abduction story of all time. And I was of the mind back then that that was the Travis Walton story. And I second that motion. I definitely agree it is with all the evidence, the physical evidence, that even at the trees, that you could still see the growth there, the, all the witnesses, the fact that he was gone for so long just so much about it. Now, I know we don't need to relive this, Travis. We go through this pretty much every time. But I'm just going to ask you one question regarding what happened November 5th, 1975. In the past, you've, state, you've stated what happened, essentially, that you got out of the truck. You were kind of show off, if, if you want to put that term, in front of your friends. And something hit you, and that's what rendered you unconscious, and your friends took off. Recently, you started to say that this, you don't think that, that the extraterrestrials necessarily took you because they wanted to do any experiments on you, but that more so they took you as an ambulance call to save your life. And I'm starting to look at your case through those lengths and really starting to see that makes more sense. When did you start to realize that this may have been more of an ambulance call than it necessary it was uh, one of the other cases of literally just being plucked out of their homes and studied? Well, it was kind of a gradual process, you know. It was just an accumulation of things over time that just kept pointing in that direction. Plus, you know, uh, having enough time to get over the overriding emotional impact that it had on me at the time, which, of course, was negative. And, you know, Fire in the Sky did a very good job of portraying that. But, um, you know, as time went on, I realized that my negative perceptions had more to do with the circumstances that I was in rather than their actual intention. Um, you know, people are always talking about the alien agenda in the singular, and I, I believe there's probably as many agendas are there as there are species, of, and I think there's quite a few species. I would definitely have to agree that with so many different... If there's, if there's life on, for instance, just on our planet, going across the pond you have a different agenda within humanity if you have species that are completely different in makeup in their culture i just imagine that the agendas are completely opposite on that end now let's talk specifically about alien abduction as a whole i personally think that this is the route that people need to be studying since this is where you're going to find your answers if you're looking at ufo sightings reports and you're actually looking at the film of what you've recorded in the sky that's not going to give you an idea of how these extraterrestrials interact how these extraterrestrials deal with their machinery or anything along the lines of giving you an insight into their agenda tracy when you said 
alien abdu- people didn't know much about alien abduction and you really wanted to put the best case out there I, I get the impression that you recognize the importance of why alien abduction is so important because to me I think it has the answers there do you feel that's the reason that you chose alien abduction topic per se rather than crash room retrievals or, or anything else available within ufology well again I, I, I'm not trying to make the same reference the second time but but Hopkins had a very strong influence on me. I got to know him quite well, and I used to, uh, when I was working at Saturday Night Live in New York, he was living in New York, and he used to call me up and invite me over to sit in on his abduction sessions. So there were many times that I would go into Greenwich Village and be sort of the witness of his sessions, of his hypnotic sessions with abductees. That's how I met Kathy from Intruders. Uh, Debbie Jordan, I guess. And um, so I think that he had a lot of influence on me in realizing that this was a very important thing that was going on and was sort of groundbreaking at that time. And I, I didn't originally lean in that direction, but again, sort of getting to know Hopkins, and then I, I was actually the person that introduced David Jacobs to Bud Hopkins and got them together as well. So I sort of uh, got involved in abductions uh, by accident, but it did have a very strong influence on me after the stuff that I had witnessed. And now, Travis, you obviously, I would imagine being in your position, all the questions over the last 40 years, probably one of the first people ask you is, what do they look like? What do they talk like? And essentially the same reason why I think everybody needs to look at alien abduction as having the answers to what we're looking for in ufology because you've had to answer those same questions thousands upon thousands of time upon the times would you say to anybody out there who's also experienced this that they too should step forward because they are giving they they hold missing keys to the puzzles that you other ufologists need to be looking at well, you know, whether people come forward or not, I've always told them is a, is an individual uh, choice. Uh, they have to look at how it's going to affect their lives, their own, you know, their own psyche, those, you know, immediate family members and and uh, uh, you know associates, not just the world at large. You know? Of course, it would be you know beneficial for people to come forward, especially if they can document what they're saying. And that doesn't mean that people who can't document uh, aren't telling the truth, but as far as, you know, providing the kind of um, motivation on the part of the public to accept that this is real, you know, there is a kind of obligation, you know, the old being extraordinary claims uh, require extraordinary um, proof and, uh, you know, at least some indication that, that, that you know, people can, you know, uh, rely on what they're saying. I de- definitely agree with that statement you just said that the absence of evidence definitely doesn't mean there's evidence of absence. And yes, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, but there's certain things that you have to look outside the box for those answers. I think this topic is a little harder, actually a lot harder than anyone else because of the fact that you have you don't have as much evidence to deal with. And then more so, you have a lot of people who make up experiences to sort of fit in and you have to weed those people out. Now, Tracy, in your step to find the ultimate cases and your association with Bud Hopkins, which ultimately led you to having the series of intruders, the, the television series, which was based on Debbie Weren't so you saw the process with Bud yourself, didn't you? See how many people had to be weeded out in that process before they got to the level of getting to uh, hypnotic regression. Oh, that's an excellent point, and that's even more true today than it was back then, because so many people now have heard about these stories and the possibility that they've been influenced by that, even unconsciously, uh, is is much stronger. And you're absolutely right. I mean, that was one of the main things even back in those days was to separate the wheat from the chaff and to separate the true people of experience from people that were sort of wannabes or had had fantasies or uh, delusions. And that still remains very, very true with abductions. You really have to be very careful 
with uh, the experience and make sure that the experience is a real one. But what I did discover was that there was a subculture of people in America and around the world that had had this experience that didn't want to have this experience. In most cases, they were very reluctant participants in it, uh, which is one of the main problems that I have with the whole abduction process is that I don't think people are asked their permission to to be a part of the abduction experience. They're basically taken, whether they like it or not, uh, which basically makes them victims in a, in a lot of ways. And I do believe that. I believe that uh, most abductees are actually victims, and it's not always a very pleasant experience. Exactly why so many people have post-traumatic st stress symptoms following these, because not only do they not ask to be a part of the process, they don't ask to be taken at the times they do, driving or, or sleeping. I just can't even imagine, to, to begin to imagine the amount of trauma that goes that they go through. But what I can tell you is my experience of seeing each person that steps forward and, and tells their experiences, the amount of support they have amongst others skyrockets. And then so does the the probability that the others around them will come out and do the same thing. And the prime example I have is when Dr. Lear, our, our departed, beloved but departed Dr. Roger Lear, before he passed, we did two documentaries, the first one being the Alien Human Project. And we needed three people that had been abducted. Nobody really wanted to come forward except one who was very outspoken at the time who had had something removed. But one of them was a member of Ciro and she asked that her name not be revealed and filmed and be filmed in silhouette. We did that. After that release of that first documentary, all her friends, others from the Ciro support group said, well, if she can go out and tell her story, so can I. They came forward and told their story without being in silhouette and with their real names being used. That ended up spawning a whole new set of people that came forward and were inspired to tell their story. And to date, there's been almost 20 that we put on camera who have, would have never have done so if it wasn't for the pioneers, uh, people such as yourself, Travis. So with that being said, each time one of you speaks or the other such as you, Tracy, has the opportunity to put their story on the big screen. You truly inspire them. Now, over the 40 years, Travis, that you have been dealing with this, because this story of yours made headlines the moment it happened. How many people have you seen that told you privately that they were taken, essentially come forward that they publicly that they were taken afterwards? Now, now, what was the question again? How many people uh, who, who can find oh, it? Over the years that the people, that over the years from in your, the moment you started talking about your case publicly, that people confided into you that they were also abducted. How many have you seen over the course of, despite however many years, even if up to 40, finally come out and speak openly? Um, there's been a few. Um, I, I, I can't really name names, but, you know, there's... Um, there's been quite a few, and you know, um, the the whole issue of skepticism in good cases versus bad cases. You know, I, I know there's a lot of uh, people who come to me who you know report experiences that you know that I believe are you know sincere that it's it's a real event. But at the same time, I think there's some who are sincere who probably didn't experience something on the same level that I did, and. Uh, that's one of the kind of the false perceptions, uh, po false representations that the skeptical people try to uh, uh, portray about the UFO field is that the is that the investigators are just blindly accepting everything, and the, and the truth is, you know, that most of the organizations, most of the um, investigators, probably uh, reject. The majority of the cases, the, the higher percentage are ones they don't accept, um, because of this phenomenon you're talking about, this this imitation or copycat thing, or you know even a subconscious sort of influence, the, to where they're not deliberately being deceptive, they they just they believe something happened that that didn't. So, sorry, Travis, John in London, um, I was wondering, is there you know of the cases that you've met? Of people that come up to you and confide in you with their, you know, their personal experience. Is there any one particular one that stands out among the rest to you? 
Yes, but like I said, <laughs> I'm not going to get into naming names. There are some that I think are just absolutely BS, and there's some that I think are solid. But uh, I'm not going to get into the situation where I'm sorting the, the wheat from the chaff because I always swore that I would not do that unless I had thoroughly investigated the case because you really don't have the right to do so unless you have you know, get the facts first. That was what I uh, really, you know, felt the most outrage about was people that were judging our report, with, and they hadn't even looked at the facts. They didn't have any idea, you know, what was claimed or reported or anything, and they're already attacking it. So, you know. While I respect your anonymity to, to your certain friends and people that have confided, you, you say there are some cases where things have stuck out that you put down as possibly this is genuine rather than, you know, chaff and wheat separating it. Separating it. But w with the situation that you were in, you, you know, it's a very unique situation. There's not a lot of people that, that do come forward like yourself. What is it that made the, the individuals that have come to you over the years stand out without putting names to it? But is it because of something that you've experienced that you know that, you know, no one else could experience that? Is there anything that you can give us, you know, because there are many people all around the world, including myself, who's been into your case for many years and has always wanted to ask hundreds of questions. But obviously, I realize we're very short on time. And, and I just really wanted to get your perspective of it. What, what is so different about an alien abduction? compared to, say, a military abduction or, or just being abducted in the general sense? What's different that, that you know is, you know, real and, and it's not, you know, made up? Yeah, well, it's kind of like the definition of obscenity. You, you know it when you see it. <laughs> and it's different every time, you know. I, I, I would hesitate to, you know, uh, lay out a description of what would pass in that regard. For very good reason, I could imagine, and especially what you just said earlier, that not to make any presumptions about any case until you looked at everything, because you've been the butt of those very same jokes from people such as Philip Class, which surprisingly, or sat very sad to have seen that, but not surprisingly, all their their arguments and claims were always without merit, always circular reasoning. Tracy, just as I posed the same question earlier to Travis, you too are a, a rock star, a hero amongst people who have been taken because you took the most important case or one of, if not the most important cases, the Travis Walton story and put it on the big screen and therefore gave it a voice where otherwise it wouldn't have had such a voice. I'm sure you are, you too have also been confided with so many people who want their cases either to be at least to be heard by somebody else or I'm sure you get so much so many requests more than anybody I would imagine in this film business in Hollywood to make a film about their cases. And that sort of leads into your the 701 question. I was just wondering, I know what that number means. I know everyone else here knows what that number means, but everybody listening may not know. Can you talk <laughs> briefly about what that means? Well, yeah, thank you for the kind words, by the way, Dr. J. But, uh, yes, yeah, 701 was the, the Air Force study that went on from 1947 to, I believe, 1969. Um, one of the things that we, we've discovered in doing research for this film is that so many cases were labeled explained that the Air Force investigated, but were really not explained. An example would be there'd be a sighting. The Air Force would say, oh, the planet Jupiter was very bright that night. We think it was the planet Jupiter. Then an astronomer would come forward a couple of days later and say, Jupiter wasn't even visible on that side of the Earth at that time. But the Air Force would not then take off the explained category and admit that it was now unexplained. They would maintain that it was explained. So there are a number of cases that are listed as explained, which are silly. I mean, they really just don't stand the test of time. But even despite that, when the Air Force shut down Project Blue Book in 1969, they admitted 
to having 701 unexplained cases. And when they say a case was unexplained, it was really unexplained. It, it was something where they had tried desperately by hook or by crook to give it an explanation, and it still had no explanation. So we thought calling the film 701 was kind of like an inside joke uh, sort of amongst us by saying this is kind of a classic example of how the subject as a whole has not been adequately explained. And that's why we chose the number as the title of the movie. I think one great thing that everyone needs to remember is for, in terms of skeptics, debunkers, or the, the government as a whole, we only need one. They have 701 that they labeled as unexplained. We just take one of those and prove it as t to, be, to, to be what it is. If it's extraterrestrial, extra dimensional, and the whole argument is one. And that's why I think it's so good to have such a high number that they stamped. Because, as you mentioned, they really try to debunk everything. As uh, Hynek said at the end when he finished his Project Blue Book tenure, said that when he created the, uh, the swamp gas explanation, he really was trying to find something. What's the most absurd explanation you've seen when you were going through the reports of Blue Book to, uh, you know, to, for, to do research for your next uh, movie? 